I played less games this year than I did compared to last year, so I only compiled a list of my top 6 games for 2021, but there are a couple games that still make my honorable mentions list. I spent more hours on Apex Legends again, screw this guy. Back for Blood was fun, and then it wasn't. The Legend of the Kestrel Lancers DLC for MechWarrior 5 was a breath of fresh air, adding better missions and melee combat to the game, and Hoonipop 2 is the sole reason why I'm still single. Ashley best girl one v one me IRL. Resident Evil Village is my first entry into the franchise. The game feels more like an adventure with small bits of horror and jump scares, and the game ends with more questions than answers. But... There's no joke, it's just a butt. Littlewood is a cute little game where you play as a hero who has lost their memory after fighting a big bad boss. The game isn't about recovering those memories, and instead it's a fun little city builder where you collect new friends and decorate houses, explore the wildernesses, and grow crops. It may remind you of Stardew Valley, which made it onto my list last year, but after playing the game, the only similarities the two have is the feeling of comfort and relaxation. From the creators of FTL comes a strategy driven game about traveling back in time to save humanity from alien bugs. Into the Breach's main gameplay point is replayability. Whenever you lose, the player is teleported to a point in time where they can select a new team to fight against the bug menace. The game does well teaching its mechanics, making it easy for anyone to pick up, but difficult to master. Speaking of FTL, this game is now one of my favorite strategy games out there. I picked up both games during a sale and started playing Into the Breach first. After finishing that game, I booted up FTL and had a completely new experience that blew me away. Both games are strategy driven, but feel completely different to play. FTL puts you into a spaceship where you must command your crew of miscreants across multiple galaxies, collecting ship upgrades and new crewmates throughout the travels. Just like Into the Breach, replayability is a big thing. Finishing achievements unlocks different ships and alternate configurations to fit your playstyle. Wildlands is more of an experience, and my only regret is that I didn't stream or record any of my sessions. The gameplay isn't much to speak of. Open world scenario with enemy outposts that you have to take over and control, different regions with mini bosses to take down before getting to the big boss, same old story, new coat of paint. The only reason this game makes it to my number two is because of all the fun memories I had playing with a full party of four people. The amount of shenanigans and shits and giggles we had was such a blast that I'm excited for the next time we get to do it again. Risk of Rain 2 is the biggest sleeper game I've played this year. I've had this game suggested to me many times before, but I've always hesitated to pick it up. And it wasn't until a Twitch viewer redeemed stream points that I finally did get to try the game. Similar to FTL and Into the Breach, Risk of Rain 2 follows the same replayability style. You go in, you loot, you die, and then you repeat it. But what really pulls you in is the different customization styles you can play with. Playing the game reminds me of old MMORPGs where you get to dive into a dungeon or raid and you always try to get the best loot at the end of the run. A unique brew of characters allows for different styles of play and each one of those characters have alternate abilities to unlock, allowing for even further customization. As of writing this script, there's a free new expansion that is set to come out soon and it adds a whole new area as well as two new characters which I can't wait to try when it releases. Risk of Rain 2 is worth the money put into it and the developers have done a great job at crafting a unique and attractive world to enjoy. Of course, I can't talk about this game without mentioning its soundtrack. The music does a wonderful job at immersing yourself into the strange and mystical world while simultaneously enchanting your eyes at the unique visuals and vast palette of colors. At this point, my game of the year seems to always go to best soundtrack of the year, and Risk of Rain 2 does not disappoint. 